Okay, so you can see this time we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I wanted to make this more uh, instructional for you and, and show you more of the things that you're going to find. If you're one of those people considering moving to Cape Coral, you need to watch this. We're getting after it next. Hey everybody, my name is Craig Cunha. I'm a real estate agent here in Southwest Florida. If you're looking for a channel that'll tell you a little bit more about what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep, and buy real estate on the Gulf Coast, this is the channel for you. Go ahead, subscribe, hit the little bell to make sure you're notified every time, and you can go ahead and get started with your property search at ournextfloridahome.com or go to our mobile app, Our Next Florida Home. You can use the MLS the same way we do. I am getting contacted by people every single day and I absolutely love it. If you're somebody that has watched some of these videos, you've subscribed and you still need more information or you wanna talk about your particular situation, go ahead and reach out by call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast. All right, so I wanted to talk this time a little bit more about Cape Coral specifically, what it's gonna look like for somebody moving here, where to find things. We'll do a little bit of pros and cons and stuff, but I didn't wanna to get too heavily into that because it's kind of a different video. This is to lay out the, the land for you and give you an idea of where you're going, where you're gonna find things, and maybe your next vid visit here will be a little bit easier to navigate. So as you know, Cape Coral is in the state of Florida. In the state of Florida, the one thing that you should know is climate changes based upon where you're gonna be. Now, I think everybody should know by now, North Florida can get snow. That's not gonna happen here in Southwest Florida, but it can happen right up here towards the Panhandle. Uh, it does happen. There's a different terrain there, a different feel. So if you're wanting more of a uh, a uh, Georgia and Tennessee kind of feel, you might get more of that up there. Uh, it doesn't get subtropical until maybe Tampa, Orlando, and on the way down from there. So, we are situated all the way down at the bottom of the state of Florida. So, we will be found right next to Fort Myers, and we're also a true peninsula. We are surrounded by water. Yeah, I know everybody kind of freaks out about that because they're thinking about climate change and, and oh my gosh, we're gonna be underwater in a couple years and what about hurricanes and storms and floods and this and that. We're gonna address that stuff. We're gonna to touch on it. Once again, we're not going heavy into that stuff right now, but this is just to give you a little more information about what that's going to look like for you. Many times when people talk about pros and cons of an area, they are saying it from a position of like, I've lived in this area now since 2002 and I've seen a lot of change. So when I say pros and cons, I'm seeing it from my perspective of seeing the changes happening. Like one of them is infrastructure and traffic. People are like saying, whoa, it's getting way too crowded in Cape Coral. So what does that mean to me? Yeah, it does feel more crowded. But for somebody coming from Chicago or New York or LA, this is nothing. Our traffic here, they look at it and scoff. They think it's a, you know, a walk in the park to them. So perspective plays a huge part in it. That's why today we're going to touch very briefly on some of the pros and cons. And we're going to try to knock out some of the cons up front only because that's what everybody wants to focus on. So let's take number one, the fact that it is much more crowded and much busier now in Cape Coral. But there's a couple things that you need to know about how we're alleviating some of that as much as we possibly can. So here in Cape Coral, we are literally divided into quadrants. So the four quadrants on this, we're divided in half right about here, and we're divided into quarters right down Santa Barbara Boulevard. So you've got the Northeast, the Northwest, the Southwest, in the southeast all of these areas have different things to offer you and we're going to hit each of the spots and give you a little bit more detail about that so first the opening up part that i mentioned where we're going to see that is right up in the northwest area this whole area is pretty wide open, a lot of vacant lots up there. If you're somebody looking for a lot to build on, this is most likely where you're gonna find it. If not, you might find some of it over here in the Northeast, but the important part to point out in the Northwest 
this road right here actually let's get a new screen for you this road is burnt store road that is the road that connects to punta gorda airport it's been very popular because of the direct flights they're inexpensive and it's very quick to get there this road used to be two lanes all the way now it's four lanes most of the way a lot faster travel a lot easier to get back and forth but the reason why that's also important this whole area in the northwest since there's so much vacant land, that's where most of our growth is going to come. They're talking about a new town center. I talked to, talked to you about this about a week or two ago. That town center, they're trying to put it right in this area. So if it truly goes in there, it will be one of the um, very unique features in the Northwest. The Northwest does not have much right now. They're literally all along Burnt Store Road. You've got nothing other than residential, a gas station, a firehouse, that kind of stuff. Very little in the way of shopping, restaurants, dining, uh, anything that you would normally find in other areas, which we're gonna point that out in a minute. So that is where we're opening up the area and then we're gonna be adding new features in like that town center. Now this overcrowding that we're talking about, how all these people are coming here, there's a reason behind this. Florida has one of the highest net migrations in the country. So we've had over 20,000 people uh, just over the last four years come into this area. And one of the things that Wallet Hub just said is Cape Coral is considered a highly desirable area to live in based on quality of life. It is a report that was done and it feeds into a couple things that we can observe on our own. Number one, tons of sunshine, right? And you've got the beautiful temperatures most of the year, especially this time of year. Today is an example, it's gonna be 80 degrees. With a little breeze coming out of the north, we're gonna drop into the 50s tonight, I believe it is. And tomorrow it's gonna to be maybe in the low 70s. So that's the kind of days we get this time of year. Now, if it gets too hot, we know what to do, right? We've talked about this before. You can either get in your pool, you can get in your AC, or if you want to go to the beach. I was just at the beach yesterday. I wanna point out real quick what that's gonna look like if you live in Cape Coral because it's gonna be a little bit of a drive for you, but once you're on the beach, the cool factor goes through the roof. The closer you get to the water, there's only two ways to do it. Number one, spend more money to buy a place closer on the water. Number two is to drive to it, which then means parking. Anyway, if you were to be in Cape Coral, let's just say I live somewhere in this area, right? Somewhere in the north of the southwest. I would have to come either south cross this bridge, and then take this down to Fort Myers Beach. That in today's terms with traffic is probably a 45 minute jaunt. That's just what it is. So anybody that lives further up this way, you could be looking up to an hour. At that point, there's another option for you. We then show you how to take that area right there in the Northwest and you take this, jump onto 75, and go right to Venice Beach. That is another great location if you want to get to the water. Casperson Beach is up there, black sand, shark's teeth. If it's something that you're into and you want a different uh, experience completely, you go up to Venice Beach and Englewood Beach and get that up there. There's gonna be waterfront dining. There's a place called the Sandbar on Englewood Beach, Minnesota Key. And it is literally the entire floor of the outside area is sand. All the tables are in it and they have live music and a smoker that's constantly going. So if you like smoked meat and you want to be in the sand, in the sun, listen to live music, hey, Minnesota Key, Sandbar, that's your place. Getting back to Cape Coral, some of the quality life things that we want to talk about is obviously the water. The water plays a big part in it for, for us due to boating, jet skiing, kayaking, uh, paddle boarding, fishing, there's all kinds of stuff to do with it. And since we're surrounded by it and have a ton of canals, that's what we take advantage of here. If you are somebody that is a boater, you've got options to have a golf access canal. If you want to be golf access, these pink areas are where you need to be to get out to the golf. These green areas, that's just water to look at. Yes, you can run jet skis. Um, you can do paddle boards and kayaks and fish and all those. But the one interesting thing is because it's freshwater and there's no manatees in it, you can run your jet skis as fast as you want. 
Now, it doesn't mean you won't piss some people off going super fast down the channel, but it's legal to do so. That is not the case in all the golf access canals. There is a no wake zone. You want to keep to five miles an hour or less. You're just, you're really trying to number one, protect the manatees, number two, protect the property. If you start creating a large wake and running by these docks and these seawalls, all you're going to do is break them down faster over time. If you're somebody considering this, I know a big topic right now, I'm gonna to touch it briefly, affordability. Everybody's saying how it's not affordable to be in Florida or it's not affordable to live in Cape Coral. I will tell you there's homes still being sold right now in the 200s and 300s, some of them new construction in the 300s, and it's going to be in a dry area. So if you're a golf access person, I want you to think about this. This is where we make decisions on affordability. We all have decisions to make, right? What kind of car we drive? Do you do Starbucks every day? Do you eat out a lot? Do you have the latest iPhone? You know, how do you dress? All these things play into your budgeting. Everything we do is a budget. So when you're budgeting to move to Florida, part of it's gonna be your home expenses and the things that help carry the home. So first off, golf access, you're gonna add 200 to $500,000 to the home, home price right out the gate. That's just for the land. It can be in excess of 500,000 as well. So I would love to live on golf access. Do I? No, I pay for storage for my boat to be in because I don't want a trailer either. So sometimes you just have to kind of negotiate that out with yourself, <laughs> find out what works best for you. But please know that you will pay significantly more to live on golf access. And you have to consider also taxes and insurance will be higher because of it. So if that fits your budget, have at it. The other thing that comes into play whenever you're talking about golf access, and we had a recent experience with it, obviously with Hurricane Ian, is flooding. So if you're one of those people, you can go to the FEMA flood map and you can put an address in. I put uh, my address in to be able to just show what the map looks like. It's very specific to the address. So if you zoom out too much to try to get a general look at the area, it's going to remove the coloration that will tell you whether you're in a flood zone or not. So as you zoom in, it will then show you the blue areas are prone to flooding, the brown areas are not. That's gonna help you understand how it's going to play out for you and whether you're gonna need flood insurance or not. Now lenders have all this information. Uh, this is something you can just go to the, this is at the, uh, the FEMA website is where I found this. So you'll be able to look up properties and see whether it's something you wanna get into. If you know you don't wanna deal with this, obviously the best thing to do is to get away from the water. So the easiest way to show you what that looks like is in the map of Cape Coral. Once again, we're gonna divide it in quarters. Northeast, Northwest. This area right in here is probably your best area, highest elevation, um, least amount of canals, things that's going to play into less water affecting you. Also, if you noticed, that area was all freshwater canals. Why is that important? When you're talking about storm surge and flooding, it comes up the canals that are tidal change canals. So as the tides change, so does the height of the water in these canals, not in the freshwater. The only thing that, that affects the freshwater canals is rainfall. So unless there was an exorbitant amount of rainfall that all flushed into one area at one time, and it was absolutely crazy, that could potentially cause some flooding in some areas. But for the most part, it's not going to be nearly as affected as these golf access areas. Now, one thing about Cape Coral that you absolutely know by now, if you've spent any time here, is that Driving here is nuts. People are crazy. You might want to become or take your your former career as a NASCAR driver into the area because it can be nuts sometimes. Literally, people do not care or watch where they're going, how fast they're moving. You'll get the left-hand lane drivers in a three-lane road going half the speed limit all the time. Happens all the time. And there's nothing you can do about it except be patient or whip around them. Then you'll just piss everybody else off. So it is something that's not gonna change. Again, the infrastructure being really, really um, tight right now and, and having all this uh, growth happening is not going to help. 
but that's just one of the realities of living here. Now, dining outside is always going to be one of our top things that you're going to do. It's one of the things you're gonna look for, waterfront dining, stuff like that. So if you're in Cape Coral, a couple of the key places, if you come out here, go out to the west on Pine Island Road, Michelli's. It's a waterfront tiki style, but it has a full restaurant inside as well. Sits on a uh, golf access canal, live music most times, amazing menu, wonderful food. The place gets packed at prime hours. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to deal with crowds to get in, you definitely have to plan ahead for that one. If you're going to be in that same area, then you have a number of options of what you can get into. And one of them is going to be Bubba's Roadhouse. This is again a nice barbecue place if that's what you're looking for. It's been there forever. You throw the peanut shells in the floor and crunch through them, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, you've also got for breakfast, House of Omelets is right here. Right in this same general area, you're gonna have a Carabas. You're going to have a Stevie Tomatoes, which is a sports bar and does sport foods. You're gonna have Texas Tony's, Hurricane Grill. Wonderful place to grab a drink with friends and also uh, the food there, a lot of uh, finger food kind of stuff that's very uh, easy to eat. And there's there are some entrees there as well. If you're looking for more of a salad or fish or stuff like that, they do that as well. But pretty much all along Pine, Pine Island Road, you're going to find restaurants and shops. As you can see, there's a Kohl's here, there's a Sam's Club here, and Publix. You'll find Publix just about everywhere around here. It's one of our main um, shopping areas, uh, grocery, grocery stores. It's also one of the more expensive ones. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money and you want another place to go, then you come down to a place right about here is where Aldi's is. Yes, it's right next to Farmer Joe's. Farmer Joe's is gonna be uh, very much like Publix, only it has, I think it has a bit more of the fresh market kind of stuff. If you're looking for uh, produce and you want the real fresh stuff, Farmer Joe's is really good with that. We also do have a lot of farmer's markets that happen, especially in the winter months when all our visitors are here. And the one that I know happens constantly is right down here in the Surfside Plaza. That is um, every Tuesday. And I believe it runs from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They'll have that one. Then on Saturdays, if you come down to the southeast and you go into the downtown, you'll see right there, it says the farmer's market. So that is run on Saturdays. Um, I think the hours are very similar. But uh, what you'll also notice on the map here is this is another place where you're going to be able to catch different food. Cork Soakers is here. Iguana Mia's is here. Uh, Rusty's is here. If you're looking for a place for brunch in particular, we went this past week um, on a Sunday. They're always, they're Saturday and Sunday they do the brunch. It starts around 10 a.m. Cork Soakers had theirs. Backstreets had theirs, but I think theirs was more drinks as opposed to food. And if you keep coming down, you're going to find Merrick's Fishtail. That place, awesome. Absolutely wonderful brunch. Place was stacked. And it always is. But that's a great place. So if you're looking for dining opportunities, this whole strip of 47 Terrace and Cape Coral Parkway are going to be some of your best places to find it. Also, another road that's very busy with shops and restaurants is Del Prado, Del Prado Boulevard. So what we're gonna do is zoom back out again. All right, so back on to other waterfront opportunities. We've got right down here is where you're gonna find Cape Harbor and the restaurant is Rum Runners. That is very popular. Uh, you get to watch the boats coming and going out of the channel, and it is a nice ambiance, great menu. Lots of people go there, so once again, prepare ahead of time. They'll also have the bike nights right across from this at a place called Fathoms. So literally across the street from Run Rum Runners is Fathoms. Um, those bike nights happen every so often. This week's bike night is actually happening right down here in on off of 47 Terrace. They shut it down. All the bikes come in. They have a number of bands there, lots of uh, food and drink. And this is where you're gonna even find some food trucks down there. So if you're somebody that loves food trucks, that might be the spot for you, hit a bike night. The other thing that they do a lot down in this area of downtown is art walks and music walks. Just a couple weeks ago, they completely shut down the road to be able to do an art walk on the main road. 
but that's how big these events get here. They also do one for Christmas time. There's a winter celebration there. They truck in some snow. The kids get to slide down the snow and they shut it down again with music and food trucks and beverage. So a lot of activities that go on on a regular basis. Cape Coral is a laid back city. So if you're somebody that likes to dress up and get all fancy and go somewhere, you might wanna to try to go down to Naples, maybe Mercado, Sea to Table, places like that. Huge gathering places there. Uh, wonderful ambiance. It's just you dress a little differently going there. In Cape Coral, it's pretty acceptable to have shorts, polo, maybe a sundress, not me, not me personally with the sundress, but <laughs> uh, those are the kinds of things you get away with in Cape Coral because it's just more relaxed. It's tiki bars, it's uh, the live music, it's just that outside ambiance. It's on the water. Those aren't places you're, you're trying to, um, to be all fancy. We don't have clubs and things that you'd find, say, down in Naples or even downtown Fort Myers. That's where you're going to find those. So for us, the entertainment, the night entertainment is literally limited to uh, these bars. Some of them, yes, are dive bars. And you'll see a number of different interesting people when you're out and about. So if you're into people watching, you're going to get plenty of it. But some of the main places you're going to find the <clears throat> nighttime entertainment are going to be right here in this downtown area of Cape Coral. If you're looking for something else, you're going to end up crossing the bridge, crossing the bridge, take McGregor Boulevard up to downtown Fort Myers. That's where you're gonna have the most activity there. Now, other thing to mention to you, if you're crossing the bridges to get anywhere, each of these bridges, the Midpoint and the Cape Coral Bridge, $2. So it's $2 to cross those bridges. It's one way, it's $2, but if you wanna do it for free, these bridges here, Business 41 and regular US 41, they are the free bridges getting to downtown Fort Myers. So you don't have any uh, cost associated with it, but all these bridges are busy. If you hit them at prime times, like in the morning trying to commute to work, I'm gonna say anywhere from 7.30 to nine o'clock, they're gonna be stacked. They're a little busier this time of year, because even after the nine o'clock hour, that's when all the snowbirds get out and start doing their thing. So the roads stay pretty busy throughout the day. And then your return trip in the evening, when you come back over, you're crossing back over this way, I'm gonna say that time starts pretty much around four o'clock and runs through to 6.30. You're gonna have that bridge and this bridge pretty slammed with traffic. So plan around it. If you can get over those bridges at different times, you're gonna save yourself a lot of hassle. Now, Cape Coral doesn't have a lot of gated communities. So what's really cool about it though, is each one of these neighborhoods almost sets itself up as a gated community without the gates. There's a natural border of canals that kind of lock the neighborhood in together. So you're not gonna have a lot of uh, through traffic here. This is why I also said to use a GPS when you're driving around here, you can come down one of these roads and just be totally oblivious. There's a canal at the end of it. And if you don't stop, you're in the canal. It's happened. It just happened recently again. Another car was fished out of a canal. It doesn't sound like it should happen, but with the inattention that we have, whether you're on the phone, texting, calling, whatever you're doing, it's nighttime, you could end up one of these canals. But back to the good part of it is, it does lock your neighborhood in. It keeps everything kind of contained. And again, you're not gonna get people blasting through your neighborhood. Now, if you're somebody that used the airport a lot, we mentioned the Punta Gorda Airport. Well, RSW, which is our international airport, you can find right over here. The good thing is we don't get a lot of air traffic per se that you're gonna hear, but what you have to keep in perspective is how long, let's just say myself. Again, I live about here. I'm going to have to take this drive and I normally cut somewhere in here, cut across like this, down like this, and over like this. So that can be time consuming. There's gonna be lights, there's gonna be traffic. This, for me, on a busy day, is gonna be 45 minutes to an hour. So if you're somebody that flies a lot, either schedule your hours around the traffic, either before that seven o'clock hour, or I'd say late morning, early afternoon, if you can, that'll keep this from being problematic for you. Now, if you have a family that is always active, a couple things to keep a note of. Well, first off, any injuries that you're gonna have at these places I'm gonna mention, Cape Coral Hospital's right there. It's right off of Del Prado. 
easy to get to. Um, we have one Super Walmart that sits on the east side. They talked about putting one on the west side. We haven't gotten it yet. So if you're looking for a full functional Walmart, you've got to go to the east side. Um, but outside of that, if you're looking for places for the family to do things, we've got Gator Mics here. So they're, they're adding a lot of new features there. And there was a zip line uh, park there, a mini golf, um, arcade inside, a number of different things to do there. There's also another uh, mini golf place right about here. And then obviously Sunsplash. If the kids like to be in a water park, lazy river, big slides, all that stuff can be found right there. And as we keep getting further into this, we've got we've got this Eagle Skate Park is right about here. So if your kids like to uh, skateboard, um, any kind of BMX bikes, they've got that. Then there is an actual BMX park that is right here. So they have races there. These are races that are certified so that if you're on the circuit for Florida, even a national circuit, they have races here where you're you're getting placement and you can actually be sponsored uh, if you're a good enough rider. But this is for all age groups, all skill levels. My son just started back into it and it's an amazing park to kind of get your feet wet if that's your thing. The other thing to note is that we will have a number of golf courses that you can play and stay within the Cape. Um, if you wanted to go outside of the Cape, we have a ton, a ton of different golf course communities over in um, Fort Myers and down in the Naples. But we have a few to keep you in the Cape if you wanted to stay out this way. But the most the most time you're gonna find yourself going into Fort Myers or down into Naples for the really good courses. What's really nice too is that recently we started an app. Um, it is a scavenger hunt app that is sponsored by the city and it's for Cape Coral. And the, the site is visitfortmyers.com slash cape-coral-quest. And in here, it gives you destinations of places that you go to throughout the city and there's codes that are hidden somewhere around them. Once you get these codes, you build up at all the different locations that you uh, that you found this and you end up winning prizes. I think the top prize is supposed to be a uh, two night stay down at the Westin. Now keep in mind, while we don't have a lot of gated communities, they do still exist. And where you're going to find most of them is going to be right down here in the south. So you've got Cape Harbor, You've got this area down near the Weston. That's the Rose Garden. There is a gated community down there as well. You've got Royal Tea um, community and you've got Sandoval. There's a new Stonewater, which is gonna be this area right here. And Heatherwood Lakes is right about there. Um, there is another one that is Palmetto Pines, but it's not gated. It's just naturally surrounded by the canals. Those are the main ones that we have. There is one other um, right about here. It's the Blue Water Condos and they're golf access condos. They sit right on a basin that takes them out to Matlache Pass. So that one is also gated. But as you notice, there's not a lot of gated stuff to the north, except when we get up into the northeast, now you've got a couple right up here. Oops. Bella Vita, Entrada, and there's one other condo section right there, Colonnade. Um, outside of that, there's gonna be another one here that's also gonna be um, condos or townhomes. And that's pretty much it for gated communities. Everything else is open, there's no HOAs. These will all have HOAs, homeowner associations, so you will be affected by them. So keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. If you're looking for a place to store a boat, there are a few Burnt Star Marina, that's where I have my boat. There's also one right down here at uh, Cape Harbor. You can store your boat in that building. Usually it's hard to get into. There's not a lot of open spaces. There's another one called the Boathouse here. It's not Boathouse like the restaurant. This is actually the Boathouse where they sell boats. Then you've got another one that sits right in this area. 
Um, those are the main places that you store your boats. Uh, as far as putting boats in, you can, you can do them at many of these locations. There is a boat launch right there. There'll be one out here in the Northwest. You'll have them in Mat Lache. You'll have it in Pineland. Um, they do rent boats and let them out down here. And you can also get them out. You used to be able to get them out at the Yacht Club, not so much now. All right, so that's a little bit more about if you're looking to move to Cape Coral, I hope this gives you a little bit more of a foundation of things where you can find them, what they are. If you've got any other questions, check out one of the other videos. And if you've got a specific question that wasn't answered by the, the videos, you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.